everybody, everybody, welcome to day... What? 13. 13? Day 13? 13 viewer. Oh, 13 viewer. So, a brief history on GNL. Oh, I like, talk very fast. A brief history on GNL. Uh, so, many, many guitar players, uh, they should know the name Fender, even if they don't know the man. So, Leo Fender, the man, started the company. The, the Fender Music Company in 1955-56 So that is when he gave birth to the most famous guitars that we know now So the Tele, the Strat, eventually the P-Bass, the J-Bass, the Jazz Masters, the Duo Sonic and all that kind of stuff um, But fun fact about the guy, he was not a guitar player at all He didn't know how to play the guitar But what he did was have a good year and he trusted the musicians, he listened to what the musicians wanted. So when he, whenever he made a new design, he would go around to the different clubs in California to let the different musicians in uh, that area try out his instruments. And what made Fender Company last so long so well is that he listened to what they say and he continuously improved on his instruments. So he didn't go, he didn't, he didn't make his instruments the same way as um, other brands, meaning never. So yeah, he left the company in the early 60s, early mid 60s, and then he left uh, for Music Man, and then eventually he started GNL. You know this? Uh? Kind of. <laughs> yeah. So he started making, uh, started GNL, and then when at GNL, um, he did a whole, he did a whole bunch of things. He didn't, he didn't even want to go back to the original strat or tally designs. What he wanted was a bit a newer, a bit fresher. So the offset Doheny bodies, the contours on Tally bodies, the SC2 that we'll be showing later is uh, one of the one of the newer model, the design that he had. But they were all reliant on the older ones, older models like the Tellys and stuff. So he created a whole bunch of different things. And but the first, the most permanent design change that he ever had was he changed the headstock. Because if he continues, continued to use the old headstock, he will get sued by his own old company. <laughs> and that is why the designs of the headstock is a little bit different, but a bit familiar at the same time. Yeah, so a bunch of improve, uh, design changes uh, that he made was the bridge that we mentioned earlier, and then the uh, electronics system. So instead of the typical uh, pickup tone, he, he, changed, he changed it for a muscle bass and treble cut. So show a bit. So that was the treble. And that is the bass cut. So it's a very, even for the tribute series, it's, it's a very smooth um, tapering of the sound. He doesn't really cut any chords regarding any... He doesn't cut any chords on the details of his instruments. Uh. Even for the tributes back then, uh, they used to use the American electronics and the design from the American guitar um, so to ensure that you, you have the same quality but at a more affordable price uh, which is what the legacy here is today so the legacy comes in the legacy the name is referring to well the Strat uh, because fun fact this was made after he died hmm. you know that I didn't know yeah because like I said uh, Leo Fender didn't want to stay on so he was very adamant on moving on he didn't want to do anything but his business partner told him hey you see or <laughs> People want to buy strat, give them a strat. So, but he was like, okay, okay, with it. That's why the A side and all this came out. Mm. But after he died, then the, the the remaining business partner was like, well, he's gone. Let's make strats. <laughs> In a way, basically. But while maintaining his own vision for like, what the instrument should be. Alright, so that was the legacy. Fun fact about most of all the names, this I don't really know. All the names, most of the names on the GNL models, are named after military weapons. Oh, now I know. That one Rusi told me. Yeah. So the S500, if I'm not wrong, is supposed to be a jet plane. If I'm not wrong. The ASAT classic is supposed... The ASAT refers to anti-satellite. Yeah. Then the Comanche is a helicopter. Then Skyhawk and all these are also helicopters. You know why military weapons? I don't know. Okay. So the... But specifically referring to the ASAT. So you know the name Telecaster. Yeah. Broadcaster, Stratocaster. At the start, when they made the instruments, uh, that time in America, people were rushing to go to space. Mm -hmm. So everything very high fi very sci-fi. Mm -hmm. So like the TV, television broadcasting, 
uh, military, uh, military, so rocket and all these. Mm-hmm. So the anti, the ASAT refers to anti-satellite. Oh. So you imagine like a telecaster in space, and then the ASAT is supposed to shoot the thing. Ah. Conspiracy theories. Not really conspiracy, they, they admittedly, uh, it's in one of the biographies. Uh. <laughs> so, you do something with the tram. Everything that they have is born uh, in-house. <laughs> Yeah, so that is that is the sound of the bridge of the GNL. So GNL, uh, we use we I can use this as a starting point to describe most of how the guitar works. Uh. So, um, that was the bridge. So the bridge is a dual fulcrum bridge instead of the regular six wood screw bridge that Leo Fender started. Um, he is a man who is always looking to improve on his designs, and that is why he moved on from the six wood screw bridge into the the dual fulcrum bridge, which ensures better stability better tuning as well as a smoother experience when you go up and down so it's not just up or down like the six the how a six screw usually will be but this one it's smoother when you go up and down then you take out the the, the bar yeah so instead of screwing the the bar on and off you just insert in this is a very modern thing like if you think about it this kind of thing you typically see on like prs and kind of stuff slightly more modern guitar brands but he did it since i think 70 something early 70s What's up?
Thank you.